Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today, wearing, I don't even know how you describe what is on Duran's head, but it's odd. We'll talk about it. Uh, living the dream in Carlsbad, California, even though he's making it look like it's like 12 degrees below zero, the man that we all aspire to become. Jaron Frazier! Reserveland.com, LandHub.com, Followween.com. We'll talk about that. Jaron, what's up, buddy? Just, again, I, your introductions scare me, Mark. In, in, a, a good, us, in a good way, in a Halloween type way. They do, they do. Yeah. Uh, you know, we got Halloween upon us shortly here, and uh, I'm super excited, let me tell you. What about the I boot do. camp? You're not excited about the boot camp? That's the next week, Mark. I'm, I, I focus. I don't look at – see, I'm not a guy that looks – I'm not a visionary. I don't look out the next week. I look at today. Everything's about today. You're very, you're very zen. You're very in the now, <laughs> in the present. Exactly. I rode my scooter this morning to my favorite coffee shop, and it's so funny because I pull up in my scooter, and I have this helmet that looks – it looks like it's for an elephant. And somehow I, – I don't know. I, I bought it on Amazon.com. I thought, oh, this is going to fit my head. It's going to look cool. It doesn't – it's not even close to looking cool. And I should have returned it, but I, I thought about it. I thought, man, if I, if, I, if I get in a motorcycle accident, at least this thing has a slightly bigger chance or better chance of, of saving my life compared to a normal helmet that fits my head correctly. Yeah, we, we got to talk about this scooter. Are you, you going to do some like GoPro video so we can see what this thing looks like? Or just, 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 just do some video so we can see what okay. it looks like, how fast it goes. Exactly. Put Lauren on it. She'll love it. I got it up to 60 today. I was excited. Oh, my um, gosh. This thing is dangerous. It's awesome. It's awesome. It, there's one little stretch of beach, uh, one of my favorite little spots that I surf. Uh, in fact, I'm going to try and get out a little later today. Uh, it's called Ponto. And at Ponto, um, uh, it, it, I don't know what it is, but I mean, it's weird because even if the wind's not blowing, in that little area, just the wind swirls, especially if you're on a scooter. So I, if I have a surfboard on my scooter, because I have a little rack that my surfboard goes on, right. which, which is why I bought the scooter, um, my bike goes back and forth and it, it freaks me out because I like it's kind of like the speed wobbles if you're on a skateboard. So it's pretty funny. That's cool. But, All right, so yeah. let's, let's talk about your, your latest and greatest idea. And we're gonna, then we're going to tie it back into land, land investing, real estate, business. But I just thought this was so cool and so clever. Tell, tell, tell everybody the story. Okay. Uh, as most of you know, in fact, I've been looking for um, help from many people, um, at mental, psychiatric help. Because I don't know, I get these ideas sometimes, and they're just so hard. Um, and you have you get ideas, and, and for me, because I'm an idea guy, and I come up with something that's like, ah, well, that's kind of cool. And then I go on GoDaddy, and I'm like, oh, it's there, it's available. Like, gosh, I, you know, we've talked about that 99 cent, you know, business idea, coming up with a concept, and going to GoDaddy and finding that 99 cent coupon code, and and uh, purchasing a domain. Well, interestingly enough, I w- I don't know what I was thinking yesterday, and uh, oh, Halloween's on Friday this year. And I, and I thought to myself, well, gosh, you know, like, there's no real, like, Halloween parties on Saturday because it's November 1st. So I said, what follows Halloween? Halloween. Halloween. Well, hey, that's kind of cool. Like, that rings a bell, you know, like, it rhymes. Halloween. Well, I thought, you know, what, what would be better than to create a cool site and a cool hashtag on based on Halloween, right? Like follow, like get cheap costumes at Halloween.com. So I went right, to GoDaddy. Right. Went to GoDaddy this morning and bought my domain for. Unfortunately, I ran out of my ninety nine cent coupon, so I paid four bucks. But I, um, I bought that domain name Halloween this morning, and uh, quickly within about uh, within about twenty minutes, four separate emails. I found my partners, and <laughs> <laughs> I've got my, my marketing partner for Instagram uh, or social media in general, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, and Twitter, and then I uh, found another operational partner who could handle you know most of the operational aspects of the business, and I just in my mind could create an affiliate relationship with a couple of costume companies that give big discounts, and then you create that that um, that aura around the term following through kind of a hashtag process. On so, you, so, so you created an entirely new business in about an hour. 
Yeah, I would say maybe a little less than an hour. You know what? And and I, I didn't want to spend or focus a ton of time on it because lately I've just been really trying to stay focused on this this big project that I'm working on here in San Diego uh, with this collaboration space. But but it, it was one of those things where like you go, hmm, that's kind of cool. Like it's one of those almost like a brandable term, right? Like if you brand it if you brand it correctly, and especially with social media and and, and ideally in, Instagram, you can turn a concept uh, into a lot of money very quickly. Uh, you just need the right the, you know those 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 moving pieces to come together. Right. But, you know, yeah, but you know, it's so funny because this is why I love entrepreneurs so much. Is an entrepreneur looks at the world and says, "Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be great?" Or they're just kind of fussy. This could be better, right? Yeah. And the difference between the rest of us with ideas and the entrepreneur is the entrepreneur executes. Everybody has great ideas, right? You go to a party. Oh, I already thought of Facebook years ago. But the difference is the execution of it. And you actually went out, bought the domain name, and then you started giving out equity to people to execute, right? So yeah. talk about that. Yeah. And, and I think that's one of the, one of the things, obviously, at, at this point in my life, I can't just walk into a new business idea and go, hey, I'm going to execute myself. I need to bring, I need to surround myself with those that I feel are, um, you know, have the time, have the expertise to help me execute. So, so tell, tell us about the team you, you created and how long it took. Uh, it, it took me, you know, it, 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 one of the things for, for me is having a network of different people. I know exactly, like in my mind, who I would target a conversation to, and uh, and and who I would ask, "Hey, does this sound like a cool idea?" You know, it's funny. I, I, sh- I shot it over to my sister just for fun, and she's like, "I'm in. Tell me what I need to do." That is such an awesome idea. So you know, and there's nothing better than a little affirmation. Um, you know, Mark, Mark actually yesterday told me I'm an egomaniac because he was mad at me. And I thought, you know, you call me an egomaniac, Mark, but in reality, I'm just sort of a, you know, kind of a goofball. I don't really I, think of myself as an egomaniac. I, I really didn't mean it that way. I was okay. always in a bad mood. And I, thought, I know. You know what? I, I'm, I know. I'm just going to dip in Duran's bucket. Like I could tell you were having a good day. And I thought, you know what? What, what could I just say to upset him? And I did it. And then I, Hold later, on. I later regretted it. Hold on. Let's talk about this. We both had bad days yesterday, but we'll talk about that in a second. I had a worse. Um, I had a worse day. Okay, Mark had a worse day than I did. So, um, and generally, we don't have bad. Every day is a good day, right? We're, no, are we supposed yeah, to say I mean, that? Yeah, relatively speaking, yeah. Look, we're not really having bad days. Yes, but, true. You know, a lot of work, a lot on our plates. We're trying to get everything prepared for this event, and we all have other stuff going on too. So, yeah, exactly. Um, but going going back to what, what I was saying is is. For me, I, I love to think in my mind, okay, what is my network, who my network could help execute on this idea um, because, you know, as an entrepreneur and as a guy that has sort of, you know, multiple ideas and, you know, second one that I discussed with Mark that I'm, I'm working on right now is, a, is an app um, for basically for marriage accountability. Um, I, th- I thought we talked about this, Mark. Maybe we didn't. We, we didn't. We didn't okay. because I certainly need it. Yeah. So it is. I, you know, you know for, what's so funny is I, I make it sound like I have a terrible marriage. My marriage is great. I love my wife. Everybody, but everybody could work. But, on but their- everybody, yeah, but everybody, but everybody could improve their marriage or their relationships. Correct. And so I, I, you know, a couple of a uh, couple of friends of mine. I mean, I'm, I'm at that at age in my life uh, at at 37 where friends are starting to uh, have problems in their marriage, uh, have you know considered divorce. And so for me, I thought, man, you know, it's and I, I'm a bit of an emotional guy. And when I say emotional, like. I, you know, I cry, pr- I would say pretty easy. I mean, you, as a man, you don't want to say like I cry and I don't, I don't just ball, you know, start bawling, but I, I got, I got a bit of a heart, you know, like Mark is, he's just a man. Like Mark's a man's man. Like he, when he takes his shirt off, he has got a six pack of abs. You know, like I said, he weighs yeah, a buck. Yeah, if, you, if, you come, if you come to the conference, I'll show you my, my ability to hold my emotions in. Okay. Perfect. My, like, and my so, kids look at me like, dad, we've never seen you cry. I'm like, because I've got three beautiful children. What's there to be sad about? Yeah. So, yeah. And, and, and the difference between me and Mark is I, I'll hold my child and I'll say, you know, God, thank you so much for this little guy. I'm so blessed. And so Mark, you know, he's like, you know, he's on top of the world every day. Whereas <laughs> me, I'm just, I just look at my, my children, my wife, and I go, man, I am such a lucky and blessed man. Uh, and I'm teasing Mark. But, but uh, so anyways, going back to what my idea stemmed from was that I wanted to, I, I would love, if I could change the world of marriages and relationships. That'd be awesome, right? Yeah, but I don't yeah, we're, we're getting off subject here. How did you create following? I am, I don't know. I just told you the term. I know, but up. how many people do you have involved now? There's three of us. Oh, there's three people. Okay, so what are the equity splits? You just give me a second. Let me finish this other idea. I'm just telling you guys how how ideas you know come to fruition. Then we'll get into that whole equity All right, split fine. And everything. 
So this, this idea of, of marriage accountability just came up, and I know I'm already confused every single person listening to this podcast, but great, you can go back and try and track down how my brain is working this morning. Um, but but I, went, I, I went in with this idea, and, I, and I, it was so, to me, so cool, because it wasn't an idea to make money, it was more an idea to help people um, and help relationships. So I created a, a concept of, of this app that deals with accountability and marriage yeah. and relationships. Yeah, by so, the way, those, those are always the best companies to start, are mission-based companies. And getting back into real estate investing and land investing, I think everybody should spend a little bit of time before they jump into their business model and start buying and selling raw land and think about, you know, what is my mission, right? And that's where your why is really going to get people, everyone involved, from your VAs or your employees to your customers. They're going to buy into the mission more so than they are than just the the day to day of flipping land, making three hundred to a thousand percent. Yeah, and, and and how Mark is going to parlay this back into what I created was instead of you know you like the accountability app saying hey I'm going to buy my wife roses you would buy your wife a piece of land you know it's like I mean what better to give her you well, know what better <laughs> asset the roses will die the land <laughs> the land lasts forever absolutely she may not find that point two eight acre parcel with power and utilities and you know road access in a beautiful subdivision romantic but what? that being said she could there's use a lot you could make you could make magic happen on that land you can make right? magic happen on that land she can do things she can improve it more than that more than that she has an asset that can increase in value because god forbid if i die tomorrow the roses are not going to pay the bills but that land could especially that if is- she sells it and puts a note on it that is totally, totally true. And yeah. Mark, Mark would think of stuff like, "Hey, bring you know, bring a blanket, bring a tent." I mean, there's so many things that you know, magic, magic could happen so quickly on a piece of land, and that's how he thinks. Exactly. Um, that's that's what I love. It's like you know, uh, land is what you make of it, and so uh, it's yeah, it's only limited by your imagination. Correct. So anyway, going back to and back, planning back to and zoning regulations. Exactly. That's true. Yeah. Going back to um, you know, kind of the process of of that another idea, same thing. I, I I emailed to a few people. One guy latched onto it, um, who is a developer, and said, "Hey, let's partner on this." So um, that's the kind of stuff I enjoy doing and I like doing. Um, you know, again, go, you know how I parlay it back into land. I mean, gosh, when if we went all the way back to two thousand and I think two thousand two thousand one when Mark and I met, there was a lot of aspects that I wasn't able to do, and I realized even at a young age. As dumb as I was, and I still am very, you know, I don't find myself very intelligent. I just find myself as a guy that's got funny ideas. Um, I, I go back and I look and I say, it's interesting because if I didn't have Mark around me, I probably couldn't have made this this stuff happen. And it, and and I'm going to say this. not. To, I, to, I made your millions. Just say it. Not to, just just not tell to, everybody. Just tell everybody not, publicly. I made your millions. Not to toot my own horn, but if Mark didn't have me, he wouldn't have kind of a visionary creative you know, off the wall thinker that would make this thing a reality. I'd still, so, be a, I'd still be in a cubicle. So what I did is I made Mark a millionaire and what Mark gave to me in return was a joke machine. So, and there's nothing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> You're never going to let me live down that joke machine, are you? Oh, no. And for those who, those who have li- started listening um, more, more recently, Mark, Mark, when we went into business together and he made his first million, he sent me as a gift um, as a gift to me, a most incredible um, ten dollar joke machine you guys have ever seen. I thought it was and very I, creative. I, it's it not the very, amount you spend. I yeah, thought you would enjoy the joke machine. It's, it's the thought. <laughs> I still have it somewhere in the garage. No joke. I'm gonna bring this. If you guys come to the yeah, conference, you know, you know, it's funny. You never mentioned the drone. Oh, the drone's I, cool. I, I, I did too mention the drone. You yes, rarely mention the drone. You're quick to jump on the on the joke machine though. No, the drone, the drone was, was really, cool. So Mark sent me a drone with a camera. And um, and the other night I would I put it up in the air and it landed on my neighbor's roof and you know next thing you know I'm in handcuffs I get the cops like hey why are you trying to spy on your neighbors I said officer this is my my buddy Mark he gave me a drone <laughs> so no I'm just teasing but uh, yeah it's pretty cool Mark gave me a drone that that I control with my iPad it's really neat all right well, so, we're, we're, okay we're getting off subject okay so, we bas- are, so basically you, you, you created two you created two companies very quickly. Yes, two businesses. And, okay, let's. But let's forget about that. All, all I'm trying to go back to and say with with the land businesses is, is that I, I had to find um, a, par- a partner like Mark. And and going back to your land business, if you're trying to create um, a business on your own and 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 run through Mark's program, is that 
it, there are certain aspects as you grow your business that you don't that you won't know right and that you will need help and maybe it's not giving equity or um, you know giving money maybe it's just you know you know you scratch his back and and he'll scratch yours and do favors for you maybe you don't know how to market but you've got a friend that's a great marketer you know well, say you hey know, can, have we talked about this because that's you know it's funny that you mentioned that because what I've I've seen in the marketplace and with my coaching students typically is that You'll be good at one and not the other, right? Yeah. So you'll be great at getting deals and, and getting deal flow, but you might be weak on marketing. Or yeah. you might be great at marketing, but you might dread having to deal with sending out the offers, doing the valuation analysis. Well, right? well think, think about that. So as if it. you can partner with somebody who likes to do the aspect of the business that you don't like to do, that's a pretty good marriage, right? And if you look at companies, there's always two, right? Balmer, Gates, Gates, Balmer, Jobs, Wozniak, um, you know, Sergey. Speaking of Balmer, uh, you know, the Google guys. Yeah. Speaking of Balmer, I saw Balmer last night on a video. If anyone doesn't think that guy is is loony, um, I mean, he, (laughs) I mean, again, if you're in that role, I mean, I kind of wish. I, there was like a you know outtakes of like Bill Gates because there has to be some crazy side to Bill Gates has to be you don't just create something like that and not have you know some you know some off the wall personality somewhere deep down inside of you. Um, yeah, you're or, you're a vicious monopolist. Or Buffett. That, that, that'll that'll do it for you. Or Buffett. I know he likes to drive his Pinto around and act like he's some you know humble guy. Uh, you know, that's a multi billionaire. Yeah, Bill but, Bill uh, Gates was so white hot competitive that it gave him a huge advantage in the marketplace. He just wanted to crush everybody. And he he did what it took. I mean, he would sleep at his desk eighteen hour days. That yep. guy that guy sacrificed. I, that, yeah, I mean, so, it, it helps to have a monopoly though. Yeah, and go, and 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 going back and sorry to get off topic. Going back to what we were saying about um, about sort of the marketing mind and more of the um, you know fundamental like just kind of filing paperwork. Like like there are organized people and unorganized people, and that's and and, and if we break that down from a psych- psychological standpoint, most unorganized people are are a little more creative. If that makes sense, not always. Right. I'm saying that they're the mar- the guys that are creative are generally super unorganized. Like right. like if you looked at my desk right now, it looks really nice. It looks like an art piece. Um, it, there is there is stuff just about everywhere on my desk, and I still know how to get around and 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 you know give up. But I like it. Like my wife, like hey, can I clean up your desk? I said heck no, I love it the way it is. You know, um, so so there is there's something for uh, you know understanding both like like your own skill set and marketing. Uh, and then, like Mark said, like the the person that sends out all those um, offers. Like I, I'm not a I'm not a guy that likes to send out offers. I just don't. I don't. You enjoy. you like going to the actual auctions. That's how I you like, like to pick up land or do bulk sales. Correct. Bulk, bulk buying. Correct. Yeah, companies. that that as well. But but I but I'm the guy that loves. I mean, like you know, going back to you know, just marketing in general. Like I'm I'm working on a, on a campaign, and I and I just recently hired somebody to uh, to help me out, uh, and it was an utter failure. And that's what he gets paid to do. And so I thought to myself, and, and I lost some money on that. And I thought to myself, man, and this goes back to Mark's, Mark and I's conversation from, uh, uh, or me and Mark's conversation from, from several months back um, about, or what, maybe like five or six podcasts ago where we talked about, you know, letting somebody else handle, handle the work and like not c- trying to control every situation. Right. And, right. and this was, it was difficult for me because I love marketing and I'm good at it. And I let somebody else control it, and it was a failure. And I and I know the market so well that why why so it's it's a, it's always a challenge. But but going back to it, there are you have to understand psychologically what your gifts are and what you're good at, and focus yeah. on that. Yeah, you know, and in, in that situation, I wouldn't I wouldn't come down on you, right? Yeah. I almost think if you're a good marketer, don't delegate your marketing. Yeah. Because marketing is what's going to make you your money, right? You got you got to be involved in your marketing, even if you're not into the nuts and bolts of it. You got to be on top of it. I mean, if I were you, I'd be calling that marketing guy every hour. Hey, what's going on? Let me take a look at what you've, what you've created. And it would be very, very micromanaged from that point of view. Not that you should be the one doing the, the nuts and bolts work of it necessarily, but I would definitely be involved versus, say, you know, accounting, right? Where yeah. you could have a bookkeeper putting in all your entries. But yeah, once a month, you're going to have to look at your numbers yeah. and take a look yeah. at it. I mean, you can't be completely removed. Is, yeah. is my is my point, and in some aspects, you shouldn't be completely removed, especially when it comes to marketing and deal flow. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Yeah. And uh, you know, we talked about it last last 
podcast or a couple podcasts ago about that book uh, launched by uh, what's oh, Jeff, yeah, Jeff Walker. Jeff Walker. If you guys get a chance, it's just an interesting book to read. How how a guy that went from a stay at home dad to making lots of money very quickly four hundred um, million dollars. Yeah, he's a successful guy. It just you know puts it puts things into perspective. And right now in this in this age of the internet, it's so much easier to market than it was back then um, to create a brand around yourself. And you don't have to be anybody special. You don't have you you have every single but one. But that, that's of, the thing: is everyone is unique. Everyone is special. That's what I'm saying. Everyone has a gift. Um, yeah, so you have a, spe- a specific gift that somebody else doesn't have, and you just need to learn how to sell that gift um, and market that gift. So, right, and, um, and, and, the, and the way that I would recommend doing that is is a day's day and age, you've got to give first. You have to give first in business, of course, right? Because on you know, and I tell all my students this: on your squeeze page, give out a coupon, right? Get them into your list and start building a relationship from day one and you're giving and you're giving and you're giving and you're helping them become a better land buyer. And then when they're ready to buy, they're going to come to you, right? It's such a different marketing strategy than the outbound person that has either outbound telemarketing that's bothering you or a, uh, you know, get those postcards in the mail where you just throw them away, right? It's all relationship based and it's never been an easier time to do it and you can compete with the big guys now. We're all sort of on a level playing field with technology. The only difference being between paid marketing and guerrilla marketing. And honestly, like with with land investing, you can be a great guerrilla marketer. You don't have to spend a lot of money in marketing with what we've got. Would you agree? Hundred percent. I, uh, you know, I. It, it, it that's the cool part. It just it, it's so easy now. It's so easy to do things. Um, you know, it, you can you can still stand out. You don't have to get lost in the crowd. There's just a lot of value today with the data that every that especially Facebook collects. Um, there's ways to sort of you know find your niche and sell to them. Right, right, and yeah, and you can test so quickly on Facebook, see what your conversion rate is, and then go big. Yep. Right, you don't have to spend a thousand dollars on Facebook. You can spend fifty, see what's working. You know, rotate your ads. And then look at your analytics and say, okay, this ad's working better than this ad. And keep going, keep going. Um, there's a whole thing on Facebook, which we're going to talk about. Duran, you're going to talk about Facebook marketing, right? I am. Yeah, so at the, at the boot camp, Duran's actually going to do a Facebook campaign live. And we're going to follow that campaign and monitor it for two days and see how it goes and, and watch him make his tweaks. And you can see how he, what he does in the power editor, how he comes up with his target market it's going to be really eye-opening. Yep. I, and, uh, and we're not recording this, by the way. This is it. So you got to come. Yeah. Um, it's exclusive to the boot camp members. Yep. Um, and I have. So you talk about following for two days. Are we? Are we going to do that? Are we going to do that campaign on the first day? Then should we took. Yeah. Yeah. Days? We're. Yeah. We're. We have. We're going to have an hour out on the first day. Okay. We're going to talk about it, and then you know we'll keep going back to it, and then okay. you'll, you'll jump in and say, "Oh, hey, what's how's that Facebook campaign come yep. along?" Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. I, I, uh, I already have some cool ideas. So, um, I will implement one for some property that I have to sell. So it'd be pretty neat to, uh, are, are you going to sell or are you going to build your list? Well, we can do either. We can do, we can I actually, think, do, I think we should do both. Both. Yeah. We can do both. So, you know, it may take more than an hour, uh, but we can certainly set up both. And, and what's cool is I will collaborate with everybody in the room when we talk about it and kind of get their ideas as to, okay, what could we in terms of niches? Okay, well, that's, I like, you know, I like the prepper concept or I like, you know, whatever the concept is. So right. we'll do that. We'll show you guys sort of how that works. Um, and then if I don't convert, uh, then I'm just going to have Mark pay me back. Right, right. Is that cool, Mark? Yeah, you kind of cut in and out there on the podcast, but that's okay. I'm a trifle yeah. deaf in my left ear. So, <laughs> all right. So, all right. So we've got that settled. Um, but I think the bottom line of what we want to talk about is, you know, if we're going to tie it all together, starting with Duran's quick business launch of two companies, is that number one, when you have an idea, right, start executing on it. Even it's not going to go perfectly, but at least put it out in the world and test it because it costs nothing to do now. So definitely do that. And when it comes to real estate, test your crazy ideas. I mean, I have coaching students that are, they're doing crazy, crazy marketing things. Some of it works and some of it doesn't. But at least they're trying and they're hustling and they're doing it. And, 
it's it's great. It's great to watch. So, you know, I, we've talked about this so many times, but it's it's all about speed and velocity and getting things out to the marketplace and not being a perfectionist, not getting stuck with paralysis by analysis, especially in business. Wouldn't you yeah. agree? Totally. Yeah. So, all right. Um, and then as far as the boot camp's concerned, come to the boot camp. If you don't have the two free tickets from the Investor's Toolkit, uh, go to landconvention.com and you can buy two tickets now. Um, spaces are, space is limited. It is filling up fast, but there still is time uh, to get in. Right? Perfect. Yeah. Not, not. Or, or email support at thelandgeek.com. And if you like the podcast, let us know. Leave a comment on iTunes and rate us. And uh, it really helps us as well in and, uh, and building our following too. So, yeah, let us know about that. Oh, right. oh and that's, that, 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 that's also mentioned. There's some, we, had some, uh, we had some folks that were looking for hotel rooms. And then I had the uh, – I, I just happened to get a nearby hotel. Very reasonable, Mark. Um, yeah, you know, you always do this. In fact, my wife wanted me to ask you, um, we're going to go to Disneyland in a couple weeks. Yeah, and she's like, you know, what about this hotel? We need a suite because there's five of us. So okay. when we hang up, um, I want you to help me get a suite. Okay. Yeah. Per- perfect. Uh, the VIP suite. I'll help you out. Yeah, um, but I, I want to get a good deal. Oh, of course. All, all that money I'm saving on the room, I'm putting towards land. That's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, so, Mark, why, why don't you go ahead and I mean, I, I I know that you love to put me on the spot, but it's it's time today because we didn't even talk about this today. Do you even have a tip of the week? Is I, I do have a tip of the week. I'm always, no. I'm always prepared. I'm not buying it. You know, and I have two tips of the week if you want. I'm not, I'm not buying it. Yeah, I, I'll give you your tip if, if you need it. But okay, I've got, I've got two. Give me, give, it, give, me, give me one. Are you, are you going to start looking for your tip while I'm talking? Yeah, you go ahead. You talk, and if I can't find it, you've got a backup for it. All right. So the first tip of, my, of the week is a free app, right? Because I think this is so important, and it rarely gets mentioned because it – it kind of has a negative connotation if you're not in it. But I'm telling you, if you're going to own your own business and you're going to start doing anything in business, you need to know how to sell, right? And so there's a free app that you can download on the App Store. Uh, I don't know if it's on Android as well. I, I know it's for definitely for Apple. Um, it is called Sales from the Streets. For salespeople, by salespeople. And guess what, folks? We're all salespeople. I don't even care if you're not in business. You're, every day you're trying to sell your spouse on your idea. You're trying to sell your kids to be good people and eat better. Every day you're a salesperson in some way or another. And I think the more that you have that top of mind awareness about that and getting tips, the better. So that is my free tip of the week is the app Sales from the Streets. And Duran, you have yours or do you want to take, uh, take mine? Uh, you know what I do have. You know what I do have a uh, a um, tip, and I'm gonna get. I'm gonna find it for you guys right now. It is the um, okay. Here, ready. It yeah. is called. It is a okay. First off, we talked. We we talked drones earlier, and I don't know if we talked about this drone, Mark. Okay. But I I love this drone. Um, it's called the Phantom Two drone. Okay. The website is DJI.com. DJI.com. I know. We, I know. We've talked about drones before. Drones, but and I we may have mentioned this Phantom Two, but this Phantom Two Vision um, has a has a high def camera and it flies at great distance. But I think from a marketing perspective of your land, it is it is a perfect idea to capture more than just having taking a picture. This create a so video. Cool. To create a video, and I think that this. If I if I if I'm correct, I think that that the, the Phantom Two or the Phantom Two Vision is somewhere around. Um, 1500 bucks, Mark, if I'm correct. Yeah, that's expensive oh, no, for a drone. No, no. eight ninety nine. dollars It's still expensive for a drone. Why, why not get the parrot drone for, what, 500 Okay, but because it, well, this thing's got a, I think it's got like a GoPro camera on it. Okay. What I, because it doesn't go as far. Um, oh, okay. So you're only control, I think you can only control a parrot with uh, Wi-Fi. Um, this one has its own controller, so you can go like, um, I, I want to say like half mile away. Oh, that's cool. Something crazy. So it, it, these are these are uh, you know a step above eight ninety nine. If you're into you know doing different creative stuff with your land and marketing, and you you know you've had success on let's say three, five, ten parcels, and you want to find a different way to market them, this is a great idea. All right, I love it. I love it. So. DJI.com, and I'll save my other tip of the week for next week, which by the way I know you're gonna love. 
I don't know. Because I will. It's, you know, you're, you're definitely gonna love it. It's so you. Good. You want me? You want me to give you a hint? What it is? Just hint, hint, please. Yes. Um, backlinking. Backlinking. Back just go. Just high, go. High just quality go. links. Just go. No, I'm not gonna I, go. I, two tips of the week. Come on, dude. Hook, hook, hook the, hook the brothers All up. Right, this fine, up on fine. The podcast. It's, okay, go. fine. It's linkspy.com. Oh, high God. quality it's links. Save time. Easy to use. Spy on your competition. Automated link intersect reports for your client's website. I, you know what's funny? I think we've already talked about this before. We have not talked about Link Spy. We might have, dude. You probably know about it, but we've not oh, talked okay. about it. Okay, maybe not. All right, but basically it's, you know, you spy on your competition, find the most valuable links, see which links put them ahead of you in Google, and reach out to the linking website, get the same link and tons of traffic. It's just it's just a, a, a kind of a ninja way to get traffic. It used, link building used to be a great way to uh, generate traffic, and it's always changing. So um, I, I knew that Duran would like linkspy.com. Our now, third just, tip of the week. Just, just let everybody know. So there, there's, uh, it's not free. It's not. Uh, okay. I, I'm just looking uh, at the plans. It's not free. Okay. So it's 19 a month, 49 a month for a marketing team and 100 bucks for, as an agency. So individuals, 19 bucks a month. It doesn't necessarily give you links. It shows you where, who has the links and how p- to possibly go and get those. Correct, Mark? Yeah, but it's a time saver. I, I don't know exactly how it works. So but what there, Mark's trying to say, Mark's got a, Mark's a great tip of the week that wasn't that good because he didn't even know what this thing, this website and seven does. days free trial. Well, <laughs> I, 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 fine. You're right. You I, have I apologize. Much, for you my, better have a much tip better of tip of the week next week, Mark. Next, of the week, next week will be a lot better. I'm much just better. Easy. I'm just teasing. Okay. Hey, Mark. Uh, hey, listen, I got to run. I got to go jump in the water. I'm right. uh, thirsting for some waves. Go go to the go to the waves. Thanks, Strand. I want to thank all the listeners out there uh, for listening to the podcast. Again, Go to iTunes.com, leave us uh, a comment, rate us highly, please. Go to the Facebook page, go to uh, likethelandgeek.com, and look, buy some res- right, buy, buy some wholesale land from Duran. Go to reserveland.com. If he doesn't have anything you want, go to frontierpropertiesusa.com. Get some wholesale land. And, of course, always check out www.thelandgeek.com. Download for free the Passive Income Blueprint. Get the ebook. How to avoid the three fatal land buying mistakes, and of course, get this podcast delivered each week to your email inbox. This is Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek. Thanks again, everybody, for listening. Duran, thanks. See everybody next week. Don't forget it, November 7th and 8th. See you there. Boot camp. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.